Thank you, Deputy Chairman, sir. Sir, the Footwear Design and Development Institutes were set up as far back as 1986 by the Rajiv Gandhi government. This is way before the National Skill Development Corporation or Skill India set up by the UPA and NDA governments and is a tribute to the foresight and ability of Sri Rajiv Gandhi to imagine how much work needed to be done to take this particular sector to world-class standards, to build on India's great heritage in terms of leather work and design. And this, these institutes have been functioning for many, many years across 12 campuses. This time, we are now making them institutes of national importance, and I support that. So there are certain concerns I have with the details of the bill. One, it uh, relates to the functioning in terms of the finances. So far, these, these institutes have been funded by the central government. In the bill, it appears that it is, uh, the institutes are going to have the ability to raise their own resources. And my concern is that, I mean, this is a good thing, that institutes will have the ability to go out and raise resources and enhance their endowment funds, etc. But at the same time, the worry is that these will become commercial, uh, commercially oriented and we charge an inordinate amount of money to students. So I, I, and then this would also give the Commerce Ministry an opportunity to step back its funding for these institutes, and that would not be a good thing. So I would urge the minister to clarify on what is the pattern uh, expected of these institutes, and how do we ensure that students do not suffer hardship? When we talk of student hardship, my mind goes back to the last day of the previous session when we were besieged by phone calls and emails from students urging us to pass that bill on that day. It, it was listed for business, but we did not take it up. We adjourned early because students were worried that their degrees, the exams that they were planning to take, etc., would not be valid as a result of the bill not being passed. Well, this is not a problem that you know, the minister is unaware of. She certainly had uh, given a written reply in, to this house, uh, pointing out that about 3,600 plus students were affected from, in multiple batches from 2012 to 2015. Now, the agony of the students is something to be noted, sir. They uh, were not sure whether they were going to get degrees or not, whether their exams were valid or not. They had to approach the Delhi High Court. They had to approach the Supreme Court. What kind of uh, government are we running if we force our students to spend their time in courts engaging lawyers to, to ensure that they get some uh, you know, valid degree, valid diploma, whatever it is that we promised them when we allowed them to come in and take admission. So that is a matter of grave concern. So this is partly a result of our education bureaucracy. Um, the, the students, see, across institutes, sir, there is a demand, and there's been a long-standing demand for getting degree status. I used to teach at the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, and only now when we pass the IIM's bill will they also be allowed to grant degrees. Until now, they only issue postgraduate diplomas. These diplomas were sufficient because the market accepted them. And even in the case of FDDI, I'm sure that as they, their website claims that they have 100% placement, the market is certainly accepting the diploma. But students, parents, um, prospective in-laws all want their people to have degrees. And given that, it is important to ensure that degrees are granted in the correct manner. Unfortunately, the FDDI first went to the Punjab Technological University, then to Mewar University, then to IGNU, in a, in a desperate attempt to try and get some kind of participation, some kind of approval for their degrees. These were struck down by the University Grants Commission. So what I urge the minister to do is to talk to the HRD ministry, the UGC, et cetera, and find a solution to ensure that this chaos that has been visited on the students with regard to their diplomas and degrees does not continue to worsen, and this issue continues to remain in the courts. I support Vijay Sai Reddy's point that those people who have previously been given, uh, who have graduated from these institutes, that their diplomas be recognized and officially as uh, degrees uh, after the passage of this particular law with retrospective effect. So, there's also concern about the actual functioning of these institutes. One, I am not sure where the faculty all come from, what kind of background info, uh, you know, input is put into the generation of top quality faculty to ensure 
uh, high quality training for these students in this very, very important, um, uh, very, very focused uh, market, market focused discipline. There, has been, there have been complaints that students have had to pay for their own factory visits, that the quality of materials used in their laboratories and in their uh, workshops are not of, that, that they are of substandard material. So there are all these concerns that uh, have been raised. So while normally I would not be a person who would ever urge uh, the ministry to get mixed up with the autonomy of the institutes, I strongly support the autonomy of educational institutions, here I do uh, urge the minister to ensure that the ministry uh, engages, handholds, works intensively with these institutes to ensure that the quality of education and training that is being provided is of, uh, of the quality that we have pro promised the students when we admitted them that these are also that the teachers are invested in so that they get world class training and exposure this this is has potential for high fashion high design for taking indian heritage to world markets etc and so there is a lot that can be done to make this a world class uh, set of institutions so finally, okay, I would just urge the minister to take all these actions and to ensure that the student's suffering is brought to an end, that the institutions legitimately and fully earn the status of institutions of national importance. With that, I thank you for the opportunity and commend the bill to the House for passage. Okay, thank you. That's all.